morning, this morning on this glorious, beautiful fall morning. Amen. Amen. Sun is shining. The weather is beautiful. We're here and alive. And as my sister, I call her Dr. Cox, as she would say, millions didn't make it. But certainly we did this morning and we should be ready to give God all the glory and all the praise. Amen. Amen. I want to sing an old song this morning. I shall not be moved. Amen. Amen. Come on and help me sing it. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. In his love abiding, I shall not be moved. And in him confiding, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. Though all hell assail me, I shall not, Jesus will not fail me. Jesus will not fail me. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the wall. All is over. I shall not be moved. And though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. And on the rock of ages, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the wall. All is over. Come on and sing it if you really mean it. Move. Oh, you know that I shall be, I shall not be, oh, and I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters, oh, I shall not, let's sing that last verse one more time, though the tempest rages, and though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved, and on the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the wall, all is over. Should I not come on, see, be seen? Oh Lord, you know that I shall not be, I shall not be, oh, and I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree. It doesn't matter what we end our doctrine that shall come. We're going to stand on the rock of ages. Amen. Come on and sing it. Oh, yes, and Lord, you know that I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I'm coming to tell you. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that is planted by the wall. Waters. Yes, and I. One more time. Come on, sing it like you need it. Oh, Lord, you know. Stop me from praising the Lord. All right, all right. Uh, this also is an old song, number 348 in the Burgundy Book. <clears throat> Hilltops of Glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hilltops of Glory. <clears throat> Let us sing. Onward rejoicing, uh, I tread life's way. Uh, Higher I'm climbing, each passing day. Hilltops of glory now rise in view, where all shall be made new. I say, Hilltops of glory, I now can see. Okay. 
So let's be uh, attentive to the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for just the weather we're getting today, Heavenly Father. Uh -huh. It might not be what we want to, but it's still, Heavenly Father, we're still here. Amen. Yes. So we thank you for that, Heavenly Father. We thank you to watch over, watching over the people in the nursing homes, Heavenly Father. Uh -huh. The ones who are incarcerated, Heavenly Father. Uh -huh. And the one who, Heavenly Father, who wanted to get here for some reason or another, but could not. Uh -huh. Heavenly Father, we continue through this service, Heavenly Father, to, to tell you thank you, Heavenly Father, and be with us to the end of the service. In thank Jesus' you. name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. I tell you, it's such a blessing to be here this morning. Sing praises to our God. Amen. That's one thing I always love to do. Even before I became a member of the Lord's Church and found out the truth, I, yes, sir. Uh, whenever I got a chance to go to church, I uh, just love singing. Got a little cold, but I'm going to go. Uh, we're going to sing uh, some verses of number uh, 403 that's in the Burgundy book. I love this song also, No Tears in Heaven. Yes, sir. We need to be always reminded there, there are no tears in heaven. Yes, sir. No yes, matter sir. how much we go through, how much pain we physically may go to, mentally, or whatever. Yeah. There are no more tears in heaven. Yes, it's going to be a wonderful place for those who are faithful to our God. <clears throat> no tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. Jesus. 
It's so good to see you. We want to remember in our prayers, Sister Rose Oliver, Sister Linda Bradley, and Brother Jay Shannon, all of them are traveling Amen. and out of town, and we want to remember them in our prayers. And, and they made it clear to me, Brother Marcus, that they'll be worshiping uh, in the house of the Lord Amen. where they are. So Amen. we're thankful uh, that they are in worship on this morning and praising Almighty God. I pray that you all have had a wonderful and blessed week. I know you're blessed no matter what's going on because you're here today. And that alone is a blessing. When you can wake up and see yonder's blue sky, or whether it's an overcast, that's a blessing. When you can dress yourself and the undertaker did not wash your body, the undertaker did not tie your shoes, it's a good day, Brother Terry. It's a good day. When you slept in a nice bed, it might not have been a pasta peeling bed, but you wasn't laying on a cooling board. Amen. That, I think that's a mighty good day, Brother Hollis. Amen. And so Amen. we're thankful, we're thankful. Yeah. We not, may not be able to run like we used to run, right. but if you can still put one foot in front of the other, Sister yeah. Pam, that's a mighty, yeah. that's a mighty good day. I wish I had some help yeah. in here. Yeah. You may not eat uh, uh, steak, uh, steak uh, on your table. Yeah. You may not eat a uh, uh, prime rib, yeah. but, right. but I've learned how to enjoy a good hamburger. Y'all yeah. yeah. ain't saying nothing. Yeah. Uh, it's a good day when God has blessed you uh, and you wake up one more time in the presence of Almighty God. Uh, we are thankful uh, this morning. We're going to get to the word. Are you ready for the word? Amen. I had no idea, Brother Marcus, that uh, this uh, uh, theme would last as long. Well, the theme is going to last long because I'm going to keep preaching the theme because right. there's some things Christians ought to remember. Uh, but the oneness of God, I want to close that series out on today. The oneness of God. On last week, I said that the apostles presented uh, a mental portrait or a mental picture, Brother Pew, of God's oneness, Amen. of God's oneness. And I told you and I showed you uh, different uh, uh, parts of God and, and different characteristics of God which shows his oneness in character, uh -huh. his oneness in purpose, and his oneness in the church. And I told you last week, Paul starts out, first of all, helping us to understand in Ephesians chapter 4, and verse number 4, he says there's one body. And I told you last week, that's unity in organism. Uh -huh. Unity in organism. And then he says there's one spirit. Let me hear you say one spirit. One spirit. One spirit, and that is unity in life. Uh -huh. Unity in life. And then we said that there was one hope. Let me hear you say one hope. One hope. Brothers and sisters, that's unity in trust. And then Paul tells us that there is one Lord. Let me hear you say one Lord. One Lord. That's unity in authority. And then Paul declares that there is one faith. Let me hear you say one faith. One faith. That is unity in message. And then we told you that there is one baptism. Yeah. Let me hear you say one baptism. one baptism. That's unity in practice. We told you that the subjects or the candidates of baptism are true believers. Acts 8 and verse number 12. The Bible talks and teaches us that the actions uh, of baptism is a burial. It is not a sprinkling. It is not a pouring. Y'all gonna help me here? It is not a sprinkling. It is not a pouring. But it is a burial. Romans 6 and 4. Colossians 2 and verse 12. And then we told you the purpose of baptism was to save your soul. Am I right about it? Mark 16 15 and 16, 1 Peter 3 and verse 21. And by the way, if you want to hear a good soul stirring gospel message on baptism, turn to the West Oak Grove page. A good friend of mine down in Mississippi, at Hernando, Mississippi, on last Sunday, preached an awesome message on baptism, water baptism, and what it's for and what it does to you. So go out on your time and check it out if you want to hear a good a sermon on baptism. But Today I want to pick up Brother Marcus, uh, the Bible teaches us that uh, Paul says and he declares that there is one God and one Father. Yeah. 
Brothers and sisters, he says, one God, Jerel, and Father. I want you to understand that's unity in worship. Unity in worship for those who are taking notes. Beloved, we praise God. Listen to this carefully. We praise God, Brother Terry, for what he has done for us. But Paul, we worship God because of who he is. Let me say that again. We praise God for what he has done for us. But we worship God because of who he is. Sensational Saints, I'm reminded of a powerful pericope that recorded, that's recorded in the ancient text uh, that declares the oneness of the one true God. Am I right about it? First Kings chapter 18. Y'all come on and walk with me a little. Uh, First Kings chapter 18, verse 19 through 40. And I'm going to paraphrase for, uh, for time's sake uh, because there's quite a few verses. Uh, but the Bible says uh, in verse 19 of 1 Kings 18 that Elijah, that great prophet, uh, he called all 450 prophets of Baal. Uh, and by the way, he said, pick up the 400 prophets uh, that's sitting at the table of Jezebel uh, down in the grove of Esherah. He says uh, he called them all out, Marcus, to Mount Carmel. Uh, the people were silent. Uh, Elijah challenged him uh, to follow the God uh, who will show up and show out. Uh, in other words, he declares that whatever God shows up uh, and answer his people, that will be the God that we will serve. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, he says in verse 22, Elijah began to brag about being uh, the only prophet of God. Uh, he was the only one prophet of God still standing. Uh, and he was standing uh, against the 450 prophets uh, of Baal. Uh, but how many of you know this morning uh, that when you're standing with the one true God, uh, you're standing with the majority. Am I right about it? Uh, I feel some preaching coming here. Uh, it does not matter uh, how many enemies you have before you. Uh, it does not matter how many enemies uh, that have surrounded you uh, when God is standing by your side uh, you're sta I wish I had some help in here you're standing with the majority it does not matter what your enemies say uh, it does not matter how many roadblocks they put in the way uh, I serve a God uh, who is able to make me uh, or help me make my stumbling blocks uh, stepping stones uh, and it gets me higher to God uh, every step I take uh, am I right about it uh, he said, uh, I am the only one prophet uh, standing with God. Uh, then Elijah told him, bring two bullocks. Uh, the King James says two bullocks. Uh -huh. He says, Look, watch this now, Marcus. Uh, he wanted to show them there was no cheating going on. Uh -huh. He said, now from the two bullocks, uh, I want you to choose the one that you want. Uh, he said, cut it up. Uh, he said, put it on the altar. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. So they laid it on the wood of the altar. Uh, he said, wait, uh, but don't set no fire to it. Uh, Elijah told them uh, that he'll do the same after they get through. Uh -huh. Then the Bible said, Elijah told the 450 prophets of Baal uh, to call on Baal first. Uh, since it's a lot of y'all, uh, I'm going to let y'all have y'all way. Am I right about it? Uh, the Bible said they prepared the bull. Uh, they put it on the altar. Called on their God Baal. Uh, the Bible said they called from morning to noon. Uh, they shouted, oh Baal, uh, will you please answer us? Uh, am I right about it? Uh, but the Bible said they called him, uh, but Baal did not answer. Uh -huh. The Bible said they got so mad, Jarrell. Uh, they jumped on the altar and broke the altar down. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. But Elijah, uh, he went through with them, brother uh, 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 Spence. The Bible said Elijah, brother Terry, he got beside himself uh, and he started mocking them. Uh, he called, uh, he told them, listen, uh, he is a God. Uh, why don't you call on him a little louder? Uh, Elijah told him, uh, maybe he's talking to somebody else yeah. call a little louder maybe he's pursuing after somebody else call him a little louder maybe he's on a journey because you know God's is busy don't you he said maybe just maybe maybe your God is asleep and you need to wake him up saturated saints I'm glad this morning Iris I'm glad this morning that I serve and Present God. 
It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what place in the country I am. He is there and he's able to see. Am I right about it? I don't have to worry about where he is, Jarrell. When I call on him, he might be handling hurricanes over in Hawaii. He might be handling earthquakes over in the desert. He might be handling tornadoes in the South Central. But when I call him, it does not matter because he's an omnipresent God. I wish I had some help in here. Listen to the ancient text. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse number 3. The New Living Translation says, The Lord is watching everywhere. He keep his eyes on both the evil and the good. That's the kind of God you and I serve. That he can be over in China and over here in America at the same time. And so when we call on him, we can trust him. That he will hear. They said Elijah told him maybe he sleep. Not only that, I'm glad I serve a God who doesn't have to be awakened out of his sleep. Am I right about it? He never gets tired. He never gets weary. He never gets worn out. He never have to take a nap. Oh, what pitiful state we'll be in if God just took a break for one minute. Close his eyes and lost consciousness. The moon would fall from its socket. The sun would refuse to shine. The earth will fall into the sea. I wish I had some help in here. We serve a God who does not have to sleep. Am I right about it? Back to the Bible I go. Uh, Psalms 121 verse 3 and 4 the Bible says in the New Living Translation uh, he will not let you stumble uh, talking about God y'all uh, the one who watches over you uh, will not slumber indeed he who watches over Israel uh, will neither slumber nor sleep uh, I tell you we serve a God who doesn't have to take a break uh -huh. yeah, that's right. That's right. back to 1 Kings 18 in verse number 28 the 450 prophets of Baal shouted out loud and began to act like wild savages. The Bible says that they begin cutting themselves with knives and with swords. They cut themselves, Brother Terry. Yeah. The Bible said until blood began to gush out of their bodies. Uh -huh. That's what will happen when you fool around with false prophets that serve a false god. You will mess around and hurt yourself. Uh -huh. Not only will you mess around and hurt yourself uh, when you deal with false prophets and follow false gods, uh, you'll fool around and lose your life. Uh, not only will you fool around and lose your life uh, when you fool with false prophets uh, that serve false gods, uh, but you'll move, mess around and lose your very soul. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. The Bible says in verse 29, the 450 prophets of Baal called them their God Baal. And the Bible said they called again from noon until evening. Uh -huh. But there was no answer. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, I hear somebody asking me, Brother Miles, why didn't their God Baal answer them? Well, I got news for you. Their God Baal was not the true God. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. Paul, Baal had eyes, but he could not see them. But he could not hear their cry. Baal had a mouth, but he could not answer their call. Baal had hands, but he could not reach down and comfort them. Baal had legs and feet, but he could not run to their rescue. Oh, but look here, seasoned saints, ladies and gentlemen, watch the God that we serve. Watch the God that we worship. Watch the God that we praise. The Bible said in verse 30, Elijah told all the prophets to gather around him because now it was his turn to call his God. The Bible said he repaired the altar. He built it with 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Jacob. The Bible said that he dug a ditch Paul, all around the trench. He said put the wood on the altar. He cut up the bullets and put the bullet on top of the wood that was on top of the stones. And then that was not enough because he wanted them to show enough seat 
that God is God. You see, if you do the natural, that's no prove anything about God. But when God does what nobody else can, and that de that defines his divinity, and it proves that he is God, he told him to take four barrels of water, pour it over the wood. It ran down the wood, David. It ran down the stones and the pool. But he wasn't done, Marcus. He said, I want you to do that two more times. Uh -huh. They took eight more barrels of water, poured it all over the altar, and the water now soaked the sacrifice. It filled the trench all around the altar. And the Bible said, Elijah began to pray to God. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? Yes, and asked God to prove three things things, Brother Terry. He asked God to prove three things when he called on him, Jarrell. He said, I want you to prove that you are God. I want you to prove that I'm your servant, and I want you to prove that I'm doing your divine will. The Bible says, I like saying the Bible says, the Bible says Elijah asked God to answer his prayer to prove that he was God. And the Bible says that God answered by sending down fire. Am I right about it? I need to tell you this wasn't no ordinary fire. I told you God does what no man can do. This was not fire that you light your cigarette with. This was, I wish I had some help in here. It was not fire that you light your cigar with. It wasn't fire that you cook neck bones, greens, and ham hocks with. It was not fire. Turbine fire you find in the engine of jets. But this fire came down from heaven. The Bible said it burned up the bull. It burned up the wood. It burned up the stones. And that wasn't enough. God said, I'm going to show you a little more. The Bible said it licked up the water. I, I wish I had a church in here. It licked up the water around the trenches. We said a mighty God who does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. I double dog dare you. No matter what you going through in life right now. No matter how dark the night might seem. No matter how high your bills are. And low your money is. I double dog dare you to call on God. I don't care what the doctor has said. I don't care what the economy looks like. I don't care how empty your covers are getting. I dare you to call on God. Because he'll show up. He'll show out. No, he may not come when you want him. But how many of you know that every time he shows up, he's on time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wish I had two people that wouldn't mind just saying he's an old time God. I say he's an old time God. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Beloved, I told you we praise a God because of what he does. In verse 39, the Bible said all 450 prophets of Baal fell on their faces and, 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 and the Lord and declared that the Lord is God. The Lord, he is God. And then the Bible said Elijah took all 450 prophets of Baal, those false prophets, and killed them down at the brook of Kishon. Yeah. Now, I'm not telling you to go kill nobody, but I wanted you to understand and see, David, that when God calls on, is called upon by his faithful servants, God won't let you down. I wish you just had two people yeah. that's not afraid or embarrassed to look somebody in the eye and tell them God won't let you down. All right, there was three people. I just wish I had two more that will look somebody in the eye. Brother Black and Sister Black, look at each other and tell them God won't let you down. Am I right about it? I'm not telling you that, Jarrell, because I read it in the book. I'm not telling you that, Brother Pew, because I've read the record of what happened with Elijah. I'm not telling you that, Paul, because my daddy or my mama confessed it to me. I'm telling you God won't let you down because I've seen some dark days in my life. I've been let down by family and friends. I had folk to lie on me when I had done nothing to them. I had folk not only to stab me in my back, but they stab me in my belly. Look at me in my eye. But I come to tell you, God will provide. Everybody about it. I lost one of my 
cause was about to lose my house. How many of you know that I never spent one day homeless because God, I wish I had some help. God will, He will, He will, He will. I wish I had some help. God will provide. I get happy thinking about how undeserving I am, how undeserving you are, but God is merciful and He will provide. you give in to no false prophets. Right. Sometimes they come with your last name on it. Sometimes they live in your house. Sometimes they work next to you at work. Sometimes they get in a pulpit and wear a blue suit and a maroon sweater. What are you saying? Now, I'm telling you, don't put your trust in man. Trust in God and the word of God. And if it's not in the word of God, it is not a It is not a faith. Yes. Amen. And our faith comes from the word of God. Amen. Romans 10, 17. Amen. It's not hard. You want to know why the church of Christ don't do certain things and have certain things and don't practice certain things? Because it's not a faith. Amen. Amen. We're not here to please and make people happy. Yeah. We're here to save your soul. Amen. Lord have mercy. I stop to declare and proclaim this morning that there is no God like our God. Amen. Good God Almighty. It's Amen. 20 minutes already. It's no God, but I'm going to close this, y'all. It's no God like our God. Uh -huh. Because the Holy Writ says, one more time, Marcus, this unfailable, undeniable, unchanging word of God confirms sister, to Lord, that there is only one God. Listen to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. I'm almost done. Say with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. The New Living Translation says it this way. I'm trying to tell you there's only one God. He says, there may be so-called gods both in heaven and on earth. And some people actually worship many gods. Uh -huh. That's right. Oh, yes, they do. Some folk are not here today because they worship in a God. Uh -huh. Ramos, what are you talking about? I ain't got no images in my house. I ain't got no statues in my house. I ain't bound down for no sin. You in front of that TV. Uh -huh. And you ain't watching worship. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You laying up in that bed with that cover over your head. That's your God. Uh -huh. oh, Lord. You don't give like you should because you done got in debt trying to please yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you come here and give God a dollar or two dollars. Yeah. That is a shame. And if you don't change, you're going to hell. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That's it. God ain't going to listen to no excuses on the day of judgment. Uh-huh. God gives you a whole check. And, and in the old day, the tithe was a tenth. And, and I, listen, our relationship with God is greater. We receive greater than the old saints did. Uh -huh. That's why we should exceed 10%. Uh -huh. And he's not going to listen to your excuse. Well, I got myself in a lot of trouble, Brother Miles. I, I, I'm trying to get out of trouble. I, I, <laughs> It's funny to me, Marcus, that when you're in trouble, you don't mind getting in more trouble for yourself. Okay, Brother Miles, what are you saying? Now, this is the Holy Spirit tapped on me. This ain't in my notes, Jarrell. But, but the Holy Spirit told me to talk about it right now. This is a good place right here. Listen, what I mean by that? Okay, you already got bills. You already in debt. But what you'll do because you want those new pair of red bottoms, because you want that new that other handbag or that nice outfit because you finna go to the to the lick. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've been there, y'all. Listen, listen. And, and so you don't mind, uh, uh you don't mind getting just a little bit more in debt to get that other purse. But you can't think that way 
when it comes to giving God's his. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't give because I ain't got that much. But if you want that new purse or that new suit or that new muscle shirt, you'll go further than that for yourself. That's right. That's right. You better fix it. That's true. Yeah. You better fix it. Yes, sir. This is what he says. No doubt there's many other gods. Verse 6 he says, but for us, here it is. Who? The true believers. There is how many? One, One God, God. The Father by whom all things were created and for whom we live. And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things we created and through whom we live. Don't you dare miss it, beloved. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. That globe-trotting apostle makes it clear that our worship and our living as Christians, a true believer, it's not about us, but it's all about God. Yeah. I dare you to look to my eye and mean it and tell them it's not about you. Yeah. Listen to me, beloved. I'm, I'm closing, but watch this. Watch this. That's why Paul picks up his majestic pen. Dips it in the divine ink of inspiration, Brother Marcus, and he penned these words, these divine words in Romans chapter 14, verse 7 through 9, the New Living Translation. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, here it is, Sister Pam, it is to honor the Lord. Uh -huh. And if we die, it is to honor the Lord. So we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and rose again for this very purpose to be to be Lord both of the living and the dead. Turn to somebody and tell them it's not about you or your mama. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm not trying to be funny, but the reason I said that is because many people say, well, I practice this religion, or I belong to this church, or I do this thing, this religious act, because that's what my mama did. Your mama didn't die for your sins. Well, I've been on this church because my family been here a long time. Your family didn't die for your sins. As a matter of fact, they can't die for your sins. That's right. That's right. Their blood ain't pure enough. Yeah. I'm closing. But I need to give you the final, last point of the oneness of God. Point number five. The faithful. The faithful and the true believers perpetuates the oneness of God. That word perpetuate is just a $2 word that means to continue. Listen to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 through 3 as I close. Paul is dealing with the oneness of God's body, the church. And here's what he says as I go to my seat. Therefore I am prisoner for serving the Lord. New Living Translation. Beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Uh -huh. I told you we're not trying to please the public. We're not trying to please the old folk or the millennials. The Bible said we live or we die to honor God. Uh -huh. And that's what you must do. You must honor God. You don't come to church to feel good. Amen. Feeling good is a byproduct of your coming. Uh -huh. It's a benefit of your coming, uh -huh. but you come to worship yeah. God. That's right. That's right. The Bible says He's a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not because some sounds spiritual; mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it must be of the Word. He says, "Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other, not excuses." But allowances, being patient for one another's fault because of love. Here it is, and I close. Make every effort to keep yourselves united. That's why we cannot be a part of denominationalism. Denominationalism is separatism, it's division, it shows differences. He says, Keep yourselves united. How? In the spirit. How do you do it in the spirit? Binding yourselves together with peace. How do you obtain peace? How do you obtain peace? 
through obedience of God. That's how you obtain peace. Yes, sir. That's the only way you're going to have divine peace. Because the peace of God, when stuff is breaking loose around you and there's wars going on, he puts the peace on the inside. Yes, sir. He gives you inside braces for outside storm. Uh -huh. yeah. They keep you stable mm -hmm. when everything else is reeling and rocking. I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified. Yeah. Some things a Christian ought to remember, and that is the oneness of God. Yeah. One Lord, yeah. one faith, one baptism, one body, one God, and one Father. Yeah. And if you're going to obtain the salvation that he promises, if you're going to expect him to come to you when you call on him like you did Elijah, you're going to have to be faithful to God and obedient to his will. Stand on your feet at this time. If you want to be saved, you must hear the word of God, Mark 12, 29. The first of all commandments is to hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. You must believe what you have heard, Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and verse number 5. Jesus himself says, I tell you right now, except you repent, you're going to perish. Now, why is that? Because he said, if you die in your sins while I am, you cannot come. Jesus sits on the right hand of God in glory. You must confess Christ to be the Son of God. Matthew 10, 32, whosoever shall confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. I'm trying to tell you how to be saved. He says in verse 33, if you deny me down here, I'm going to deny you before my Father. Then he says, you must be buried in the water of grave of baptism for the remission of sins, Romans 6 and 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death. Like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also shall rise and walk in the newness of life. New life comes after baptism. But there is prerequisites before baptism. If your belief is not right, then your baptism is not right. If what you believe going down in the water, I don't care how many times you've been baptized, if you did not believe and understand the redemptive story of Christ and his church, when you were baptized, it was not valid. Because your belief has to be right in order for your confession to be right, in order for your baptism to be right. And if you didn't have that formula, my friends, you have not been saved. If you have been sprinkled, I'm going to make this thing plain. Because it's my last day on this. If you have been sprinkled, that's not according to the Bible. You have not been saved. If you have had water poured over your head, that's not according to the Bible. You have not been saved and your sins have not been forgiven. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2 and 38, repent and be baptized. Who? Every one of you. You don't make a choice. He said, every one of you, by what authority? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what reason? For the remission of sin. He did not say poor for the remission of sin. He did not say sprinkle. You got to do it God's way. Turn us back, tell me you got to do it God's way. Come on, the prayer requests are here. There's some in the back. Come on, if you need prayer, I will pray for you today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come along, my friends, come along, get on board and ride this train. There's nothing on this train to lose, everything to gain. Yes, come along, yes, my friends, come along, get on board and ride this train. There's nothing on this train to lose, everything. Come on, CP, sing it with me.
know there's nothing all this training to lose. But everything you may be seen. Come on. Come on and come along. All of my friends come along and along. And ride this train. There is nothing all this training to lose. But everything. this morning. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. The oneness of God. The oneness of God. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it's my sincere prayer that you have been taking notes during this series. That you may teach others about the oneness of God. Because we cannot be saved outside of the will of the one God. And if men and women, boys and girls, are following doctrines that are not found in the will of God, then those are false doctrines. We saw in 1 Kings 18 what happened to false prophets and false doctrine. They're condemned of God. We have those who have come this morning, have responded to the preached word and perhaps had things on their heart before they got here. Sister Stephanie desires special prayers of the church. She writes, thank God for safe travels for me and my daughters during Thanksgiving. Thank God for his blessings, grace, and mercy. Please pray for both Sinclair as she returns back to KC on Tuesday morning. Please pray for safe travels for Nia as we take her back to Champaign today. Please pray for Brother and Sister Miles. Thank you. Ministry and family. Pray for the Central Point family. Amen. And safety for those who aren't present today. Praise God. Pray for my health and well-being. Pray for my finances and to be a better steward of God's money. God bless you, Stephanie. Sierra Fields. Desire special prayers of the church. Good morning, church family. I want to thank the Lord Jesus for walking, waking me up and making me making it here today. It feels so good, hallelujah, yeah. to be here today. It feels so good to be home with all and coming and asking for prayers for healing. Amen. I have been under spiritual attack. It feels like and I and I feel myself becoming weaker and weaker. But praise God, I made it here today. Please pray for me and that I truly seek after God and give everything to him. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sierra. God bless you. Brother Cliff Pugh responds this morning. Thanking God for my good health and strength, first and foremost. Amen. Y'all keep on living. If you don't have nothing hurting you today, just keep on living. Asking for continued blessing for my church family as well as my biological family. Please, God, I ask for blessings for everything we stand in need of. And I ask that you continue to stay with us and have your way with us. Amen. Amen. Have mercy. Amen. That's what you ought to want, God, to have his way. Brother Stephen Black responds this morning. Pray for my life and my wife, excuse me, and children, mother and father, mother-in-law and family. Special prayers for my oldest daughter for our continued growth in our relationship and growth um, with our family. Safe travels for her and my mother and my niece back home to South Carolina. Amen. Amen. At this time, let us bow together. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, 
we come now thanking you for this day, thanking you for your grace, thanking you for your mercy, and we are humbled by your forgiveness. We thank for the preached word today. It is our sincere prayer that it will find a resting place on the hearts of all of those who have heard, both here in this sanctuary, in the cyber sanctuary, those who shall hear this word even after today, that it will bring about a great harvest in their life, a harvest of obedience to your will. Help us to look within ourselves, and measure ourselves not against others, but your infallible word, infallible word, and unfailing word. That we will govern ourselves according to your will, and not the will of our family, not the will of the minister, but according to your word. We're praying for Brother Stephen Black this morning. Praying for his wife, his children, his mother-in-law, his mother and father, and his family. Pray that you will bless them, Lord, in every way they stand in need of. Pray a special prayer for his oldest daughter and his relationship that they will continue to grow. We're praying for safe travels for all of his family as they return home, find and Father, and we trust and pray that they will find all things well. Pray for Brother Cliff Pugh this morning. I ask you to continue to bless Brother Pugh with health and strength. Continue to bless him, his family, his church family. That you continue to cover them with your blessings. That you will bless them with all that they stand in need of. And Lord, it is our sincere prayer that you will continue to have your way with us. That we might do your will, that you might be pleased. That some lost soul will be saved and the saved will be edified. Pray for our dear sister Sierra Fields this morning. Who come thankful and grateful for being here one more time. Father, you heard what she said. She's feeling weaker, feeling like she's under spiritual attack. Help Sierra remember the counsel that I've given her many days. Help her to remember the word that I have deposited in her. Help her to remember that you said in your word in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So help Sierra to stay in the word that she may grow stronger and stronger each day. Father, pray that she will truly and sincerely continue to seek after your heart and your heart alone. Pray for our dear sister Stephanie this morning. Thanking you, Father, for blessing her and her family with safe travels during the holidays. And now we ask that you will be with both Sinclair and Nia and Stephanie as they travel to take Nia back today and Sinclair, who will return back home on Tuesday. We just ask you to give them traveling grace and that on their return home they will find all things well. Amen. Father, we continue to pray on behalf of Stephanie, thanking her and thanking you for the blessings you've already given to my family and to our ministries. Just asking you to continue to use Sister Miles and myself as vessels of honor and never dishonor. That we will never dishonor you in our ministry or in our walk. That we will only bring glory to you and that we will be an example to this church and to others. Father, we're so thankful for our opportunity to serve this church as their minister. And just continue to give me courage to say what needs to be said when it needs to be said. That the people of God may grow in favor with you. And that their lives might be blessed because of their obedience. Praying for the leadership of this church, for all the members, that we will continue to grow closer as a family. And then, Father, we pray that you will bless Stephanie in her health, in her well-being. Give her the protection and the provision she stands in need of. Praying that you will give Stephanie favor over her decisions and her finances. That she will be a better steward of the money that you have entrusted her with. Now, Father, when it's yours to call and ours to answer. We ask for peaceful hour and death, trusting to you, say, well done, my good and faithful servant, that you will bless us on the other side of this life. This is our prayer now. We ask in your holy son, Jesus' name, we say, amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you and may he keep you. Let me ask this before, some of you may leave early. Let me ask this before we prepare our hearts and minds for 
our, our communion and our offering, there was a green debit card left here in the sanctuary on the floor on this side. If you're missing a green debit card, um, please let me know um, uh, because that card was turned in by our janitorial services. It was left on this side. So check and make sure that you're not missing a green debit card and let me know. We'll now get ready for our communion and for our offering. God bless you. Pray for me as I continue to pray for you. come now to the part of the worship where we are to commune with our Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7 that upon the first day of the week the disciples came together to break bread. The emblem that we are about to partake, the bread represents his broken body, the fruit of the vine represents his shedded blood. In Matthew chapter 26, beginning at verse 26, the Bible says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And in verse 27, And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to partake and commune with you. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made. Pray that each and every one of us will examine ourselves and partake of it in a worthy manner. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Is a fine ten feet with blood drawn from Emmanuel's chapter 9 and verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, mm -hmm. and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Mm -hmm. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, mm -hmm. for God loveth a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. God has given us so much 
And all he asks that we give back a portion yeah. of what he has given us. That's the portion. And we shouldn't wait till Sunday morning to decide. Talks up. It right. says give as you purpose in your heart. That's right. That you've already given. Mm -hmm. You've already decided what you're going to give. Yes, sir. And as Brother Miles mentioned, in the, in the Bible it tells that they gave a tenth. Yeah. But now God has blessed us. We should give more than that. Amen. And if we love the Lord, we will. There's opportunities to give. There's a basket in the back. You give online or you mail to the to the church throughout the post office box. Amen. But let us give because we love the Lord. Amen. Let us give God thanks. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to give. We thank you for giving us your son. We thank you for the many blessings that you've given each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And we pray that we would give back <coughs> generously to you. These and many blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Another great worship service today. Amen. Amen. Brother Miles, uh, great boldness proclaimed to us the Word of God. And yes, sir. We can take it home and grow from it. Yes, sir. Our announcements today, uh, of course, we have our weekly Bible study on Zoom on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Great opportunity. We invite all, all to come out to that and be a part of that and also uh, call your friends and neighbors if they that they might share in with us. There's great lessons going on there and things that can be put into their lives and uh, in the lives of those who worship here. Uh, the ladies prayer and devotion, mark your calendars ladies, Thursday, uh, December the 2nd at 6.30 the ladies prayer and devotion will uh, be activated again. Uh, this uh, Prayer and devotion is every other uh, Thursday at 6.30. Uh, we have uh, uh, programs in the back that will give you the call-in number and the uh, participation code that you need to put in to be a part of that. So it's a great opportunity for the sisters to get together and just uh, be able to just praise God and take home some things that they can uh, have during the week. Uh, virtual lectureship. I'm excited, really excited about this. Uh, the East Jackson uh, Church of Christ will be hosting the Tennessee State Lectureship. Uh, this lectureship will be Thursday, uh, December the 2nd through Saturday, uh, December the 4th. Uh, they'll have several times that they'll have this on those days. Uh, they're on the program. And if you would like to tune into that, it's going to be a great opportunity. The topic will be uh, Healing for Everyday Life Problems. And the host will be the minister, uh, Brother Lavelle C. Hayes, a great minister in the gospel. Amen. Uh, CP prayer requests. Uh, of course, if you have special prayer requests during the week, you can contact us uh, on telephone number, uh, Texas. Uh, telephone number 309-212-5099. And uh, we'll pray for you during the week and for your family needs. Also, we have several opportunities that you can give uh, during the week. Uh, so please take advantage of those things that we might be able to give back to the Lord, a portion that he's blessed us with. Uh, Central Point Prayer Request Line, uh, Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. daily. Uh, this is a great opportunity not only to be a part of that, but to also be a part of others who are around the country who are gathering in on the uh, request line. Our prayer list, uh, several on our queer prayer list, uh, Sandy Lebo for health reasons, Dr. Opier Miles, the Hallman family, State Farm, COVID-19 victims and their families, uh, Cliff Pugh and family, uh, Kathy, our Michelle, this is the mother of Matthew. Uh, then we also have um, Brother Matthew Miles and Ramona Miles uh, on our prayer list. Also continue to pray for our minister and his faithful wife as they continue on the labor here at Central Point. 
uh, Miss Florine Boatman, the Cannon family, and then also Sue and William Harris. Uh, this is Tamika uh, Robinson's parents. We have a number of birthdays in the month of December. Uh, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing these words. Is that Tiana or Timat? Tiana. Tiana, thank you. Tiana Shannon on um, 12-18. Tori Johnson on 12-20. Uh, Micah E. McKinney's, uh, her birthday's on 12-25. He is. He is his birthday. What's that? He is his birthday. Oh. typo error down here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Stephanie Hallman on the 27th of December. Um, is that Malani. Malani uh, Pugh on the 27th. This is the granddaughter of Cliff Pugh. Uh, my birthday uh, will be on the uh, 12th of uh, December the 28th. And then uh, Tyra Dean, her birthday will be on December the 31st. We have one anniversary for the month of uh, December. Uh, Fabian and Yaneli Bacall, their anniversary will be on the 12th of December. These are all our announcements today. Thank you. We've had a great day today. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Let us be standing. We're going to be going home. We want all of you to know that it's good to see each and every one of you on today. Amen. To all of our visitors, those who may be visiting with us, I think I see only one. We want you to know that you are certainly our honored guest. Amen? Amen. And we're happy to have you here with us on today. God bless you. May he keep you real good. All right. Y'all ready to go home? Boy. Did y'all have a good holiday? Yes, man. yes sir. Amen. Amen. I see some of y'all ain't, 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 ain't lack of the table. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Uh, I, 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 I almost can't get in my clothes now, so y'all pray for me. I got to get on that journey again. Amen. Amen. I'll pray for you. Will you pray for me? Because we're all a part of God's family. Oh, I'll pray for you. Will you pray for me? Because we're all a part of God's family. First. Well, now when you leave today, don't forget to pray. You should always say, He is the only way. He'll keep you in His arms. He'll keep you from all harm. He'll bring us back again, and we will all be one. Oh, oh, oh I pray for you. Will you pray for me? Cause we're all part. Oh, come on, sing it like a minute. One more time, I pray for you. spirit and in truth. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up everybody that is here, those that are not here for various reasons, traveling or Amen. ill, whatever the reason, Heavenly Father, we all need you, Heavenly Father. Yes, so, yes. Heavenly Father, you know what's going on in our individual lives, so we ask Amen. that you bless us as you see fit. And Heavenly Father, uh, we just want your will to be done. Amen. Now bless us today as we leave and we go out to our separate homes of but Heavenly Father, bring us back at the next appointed time. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain seated. We will be dismissed by rolls. And please remember to leave the campus 